Welcome in to the CHGO Bears podcast. Oh, lost my <laughs> oh, voice no. right there right Uh-oh. at the start, man. That was bad. Oh boy, what's Woo. going on? What just happened? You know what? You know we're it's just, it's, it's like the first play in the Bears game. Though. Oh. <laughs> you know you plan for something the entire time, and then you come out, the ball gets snapped, and you and you in my case literally choked. Yikes! Okay. Um, here we Brian Baldy here is with us. Adam Hogue, Mark Carmen, Greg Braggs Jr. Uh, Baldy, we have some uh, some problems to solve. I, I you know you you played and have watched offensive line for basically your entire life. Have you ever seen the center block the right guard before? Because that was a new one. They did run into each other. I think worse than that, though, was that first play you just talked about. Because if anybody's watched any any series of Minnesota Vikings for the first five weeks, all Brian Flores does is line up and blitz zero look. And you – figure out, okay, we max protecting here. They drop and they come and If they're all coming, <clears throat> you know, we better get the ball out quick. We better have a plan because they're going to have a free hitter. For that to happen on the first play of the game, whether Justin Fields knew it, was prepared for it or not, I don't know. But to act surprised, like, I don't know who just hit me. Like, every, like I've watched every game the Vikings have played. And I say to everybody, you better get ready for a blitz zero package because it's coming. It might come on second down. It doesn't always come on third down. It might come on first down. Like, that's – they're basically telling you our defense isn't very good. So we have to gamble to get the ball and to, like, get some splash plays. And that, for that to happen on first play, I almost felt like saying I don't want to watch anymore. I just like, I, I'm done. Like, how could you, how could you not be ready for that? Because that's all you saw on tape and preparation all week long. So, I'm just so happy that you underlined that because, Baldy, you probably know a little bit more about football than me. I'm going to give you the edge there. (laughs) And I sat there and watched the Vikings play the Chiefs, and I'm like, this is going to be a challenge. They're in the backfield all the time. Patrick Mahomes was doing all sorts of things to get rid of the football. But I was anticipating that, of course, the Bears saw this too. And then you watch the first play, and that happens, and I'm like, I don't get it. I So you can't tell me that these guys didn't watch the tape. That's their job. And you can't tell me that they didn't try to convey it to the players. So, like, in your mind, like, where, where if you had to guess, where's the breakdown there? It always starts at the, <clears throat> it always starts at the top. I mean, that's that's right on Matt. Like, you you can't, he, he can't, like, have his hands off of that. This is the game plan. The coach is sitting there late at night looking at this stuff. What's the best? formula how do we handle this like i mean you're you're looking at that on tuesday going all right we better have a plan for this because i mean and it's not like brian flores is springing it on the league in week six two years ago miami they were one in seven they were dead in the water the ravens came to town on thursday night all they did was line up in blitz zero and lamar jackson couldn't figure it out they won the game they and they did it every week after that and turned the whole season around went on a big win streak, got back in the playoff on all that stuff. Like, it's out there on tape. Like, I just, like, I, and to, to actually get sacked on that play, to actually get hit and not know that somebody's coming. Like, it's just, it, literally, like, I don't want to sit here and beat teams up. Like, that's not my thing. But it was shocking to me. Because, I, I mean, you watch any Viking game this year. I did the Viking games with the Chargers. They did the same thing to Justin Herbert. Like, every week. It shows up. I didn't think it would show up on the first play of the game, but maybe that's what they thought about Justin Fields and the offense. And they're like, you know what? They won't be ready for it. And they, you know, they did the same thing to Tyson Badgett. You know, like they could have protected that kid a little bit better. And uh, it was hard. It was horrible, man. Well, the reoccurring issue on Sunday, 
that had Bears fans pulling their hair out was the snap from center. And that was something both quarterbacks had to deal with. Have you ever seen a game where a center, I mean, it was almost every other play it felt like? Yeah. Uh, I've been in that situation before, but that, that's back when the Packers used to play in Milwaukee and they would level the pitcher's mound in October when the season ended, except they didn't really level it. So one foot was sort of still on some mound that was there and the other foot was down. And, you know, you, you're like trying to snap it back to the quarterback, Jeff George, whoever. And, you know, it's a, hitting a clump of grass and it's just rolling back to the quarterback. But that, you know, it wasn't, you know, a, a cow pasture out there, but um, it always starts with the snap. I mean, it just does. So uh, Old County Stadium getting a reference. I love it. Packers play in Milwaukee. Let's go. <laughs> Hey, we're Packers like... used to play twice a year there. I, yeah. so I, had, I played one game there. I rolled a, a ball back to the center. Or back Shout to the out Lynn Dickey. Let's go. All oh, right. Yeah. We're only a few years removed from having, still having, you know, baseball infields actually yeah. in these games. That, that's and a fair point, too. Um, I hate the infield. All right. So, uh, Baldy, I'm not sure if you noticed this. I, I, you probably did. But on the Justin Fields interception um, early in the game, the – Right tackle, Darnell Wright, went out to block the linebacker. And yeah. the, that left Daniil Hunter one-on-one -on -one with the running back, oh, yeah. and who, not surprisingly, pushed the running back right into Justin Fields. Ball goes flying up in the air, picked off. Later in the game, on Tyson Bajan's fumble, which gets returned for a touchdown, similar Breakdown. like miscommunication up front, where yeah. the running back gets left with the three technique, yeah. And Bajan actually does a nice job of actually evading that guy, and then it becomes the left tackle falls down, and then the linebacker ends up stripping him. But whatever. I, I just – I cannot remember or, – or I, there's no way Getzi's drawing that up that way. Luke, there's no way you're drawing it up where the running back's on the D end and your tackle's on the linebacker, or and definitely not the three technique on the running back. What do you think is happening there that's resulting in those things happening? I just can't – unless you think it is how they're drawing it up, but I, I find that hard to believe. Well, I mean – Brian Flores couldn't draw it up any better. I mean, it's just a game of chess, and he's got checkmate on Luke. Because every every protection has got to have some adjustments to it. And the last thing you want is a running back. Daniel Hunter leads the league in sacks. Last thing you want is any running back one-on-one -on -one with him. Like, you got to play black big on big. Whoever, you know, the safety is or the extra back coming, like, that's how you want to decipher it. Let, if he comes, that's the back man. But I want, I want my rookie right tackle – on Daniil Hunter, who did a pretty good job on him for most of the day. Like, black big on big. Like, that's, to me, a slide protection, pocket protection. That's how we're going to start this game. We're going to block big on big. The backs, linebackers, defensive backs that come, they scan, they pick that up if they come. Overloads, whatever it is. Like, there's got to be a built-in caveat to your protection game so that you don't get those mismatches. Like, it's it's not fair to the back. It's not fair to the quarterback. It, it's not fair to anybody. So, I'm going to go one bit of positive here, Bali, for the Bears. Their defense seems to be getting better. There is more pressure. They're being more aggressive. The secondary is getting healthier. We're seeing some plays back there. What what do you see with the Bears, D? They're hitting people. Like, you saw Joquan Brisker come and just lay in the wood in the middle of the field, coming and hitting the quarterback. Like, they look like – like, remember, I think we started this whole podcast after that Kansas City game. It was a disaster. Like, that's a month ago, right? This doesn't even look like the same team. Like, they're they're playing tighter coverage. Um, they're blitzing more, different types of blitzes. Um, they're playing faster. Like, the whole thing looks different. Like, that was a good defensive performance. They gave up 12 stinking points, you know, in, in that game. Like, that's, that's a good performance. I don't – Division game, 12 points. You should win those games. Uh, that was that was a good performance. And, you know, the defense, like, nobody likes losing. Nobody likes losing division games. Nobody likes losing at home. Um, but I think that defense can hold their head high about how they played and how the, you know, the, the way that they, they smacked people around in that game. Yeah, we had an opportunity last night to talk to Jervon Dexter, rookie defensive tackle, and it seems like he and Zach Pickens are starting to pick it up here the last couple of weeks. 
maybe catching up to the speed of the league. But Dexter specifically talked about making sure his pad level is right, and that's been his biggest adjustment. You know, what have you seen here these last couple of weeks from the the rookie D tackles? Well, it's a big. It's first of all, almost, almost without exception, it's almost like a rookie year defensive lineman. It's almost like a redshirt year. The game is completely different than the college game. Like guys just titty block in college, man. Like they don't, you know, it's a passing game. Like they just like block for two seconds. The ball's going to be out. You know, I mean, it's just, it's, you know, it, it, it technique and fundamentally it's a completely different game. It's a power game at the NFL level. You're going to get doubled. <clears throat> you better be able to keep offensive linemen, you know, off your linebackers. Like it's just a different game, different fundamentals. It takes a while to adjust. Even if you look at the great pass rushers in this game, like none of them, I, you Khalil Mack, Aaron Donald, you look at any of them. Look at their rookie year numbers. None of them put up numbers their rookie year. Um, Jalen Carter in Philadelphia is a little bit of a different animal. He's just a different animal. But every once in a while, you'll see a guy that breaks through as a rookie. But typically, it takes a year for these guys to adjust and figure it out. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. No, I just – so I, I... – I guess that's encouraging that there's still, you know, that those guys, this is one thing we talk about here in Chicago. You are allowed to get better as the season goes along. That's, uh, <laughs> you yeah. are allowed, you are yeah. allowed to improve. Um, so hopefully that continues to be the case. Uh, I, I do want to swing back to the offense though, because I think we have to talk about this quarterback situation a little bit. I think the worst part about this Justin Fields injury was that it was totally avoidable. Yes. Right, like, like, like he he had probably three different opportunities to get rid of the ball before he finally did, which was too late. I timed it; it was six point eight seven seconds, which is just that's it, it that that doesn't exist in the NFL unless you're thirty yards downfield running with the ball still. Um, so I don't just what was your take on that play, and I guess where the Bears go from here because it sounds like Justin's and we know he's going to be out this week, and he he might miss some more time than that. Well, after you know back-to-back weeks where we saw, you know, marked improvement in, in how he played the game. I thought he went backwards last week. I thought he froze a number of times where there were, you know, real options to make throws. I don't know what he was looking at. I can't pretend to know, but it, he, he, he went back to kind of being in that freeze mode where he just can't get the ball out of his hands, you know, whatever it is. And on that play, for, like everybody's got to have the clock in their head these quarterbacks, especially if you're mobile, like you don't want to just take off and run. Um, you want to be able to touch the protection and let the plays develop. But I even thought he had plenty of opportunities and other plays to get the ball out faster and to open receivers. And you can see the frustration in some of the receivers that feel like they've won the route, they're in the right spot, and the ball's not coming to them. And I, I can't speak to what he was looking at, what Minnesota was doing. That was confusing because I don't think they're a very confusing defense. I think they got real holes in their defense. So that was uh, that was disappointing. Okay, so Tyson Bajan starting here, Baldy. I sang a song for him, Secret Bajan, man. It's, it's, it's made huge, huge waves across the country. I'm sure you've heard it and you love it too, but you just haven't talked about it with me. That's okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> so, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I can't even pretend to, understand, to know what that would sound like. But yeah, no, it, it doesn't. You don't want to know. It's, it's not good, yeah. but it's but it's but there's passion there. He listen. He went 13 for 14 in the preseason when he got when he got an opportunity to get out there last week. I mean, DJ Moore had one catch. He finished the game with five. Tyler Scott didn't see the football in a while. He got a got a couple of catches. Velos Velos Jones got a ball. So I'm optimistic here that this guy sees the field at a high level for a dude who's a rookie, let alone a rookie coming out of Division Two. Albeit with all the records, most yards, most touchdown uh, passes of anybody who ever played college football, if you take all the levels. what What's your baldy set of fair expectation for Bears fans for a guy like that? Even if you think, great, what should we expect to see on Sunday? Well, every rookie quarterback that looked pretty good in preseason has struggled when they got a chance to play so far this year. Aiden O'Connell, um, you know, Dorian Thompson-Robinson. Like, as soon as they, the speed of the, of the Sunday game came, like they they struggled. Now, Tyson Badgett looks like to me. He, I, if I had to make a comparison to him right now, early, like he reminds me of Gardner Minshew. Like if it's a, you know, if he drops back and it's his third step, and the ball's supposed to go to the flat, the ball's going to the flat. Like he he knows where to go with the ball. I think, I think he sees the field pretty good. Um, if he starts to have to go through a progression, 
Like I think things could get cloudy in the middle of the field uh, for him. The, the problem is the best defensive player in the league is coming to town. All right. And so Max Crosby is like that guy is just different than everybody else. Um, nobody can block him. Nobody. And so I don't know what the Bears plan is, but he's the best defensive player in this league right now. Nobody. And he plays every snap. He's never on the sideline ever. So you better they better have a plan for him because I didn't feel like they had a great plan to protect Tyson last week against what they were seeing, especially when they were running the ball pretty good. You know, Dante Foreman is a good back. Everywhere he goes, he runs the ball good. Everywhere. Like, he's a good back. Like, it would be helpful, you know, providing the game is, you know, in close like it was last week to help the quarterback out, you know, and not make it so difficult where he's in empty sets and zero blitzes are coming at him and, like, help the kid out. And especially with Max Crosby because, like, the Patriots thought they were double-teaming him last week. What the Patriots did wasn't a double-team to Max. Like, he'll beat that every time for a safety at the end of the game. So, I I just happen to be friends with Max. I, I'm almost forced to watch every game for him. He wants the feedback. I'm just telling you, this is the best defensive player in the league. And so, he will make everybody that's ever watched any monster of the midway proud of the way that he plays the game. They better have a game plan for him. Are, are you suggesting that they don't use the running back to block him one-on-one? -on -one? <laughs> ever. 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 Like, don't, don't, don't put Cole Komet on him. He'll, he'll, Cole Komet will be slapped to the ground before he even blinks. Like, don't, don't put the running backs and tight ends on him. You better, like, chip him, cut him. You better have a guy that's free looking for him because he's coming, and he's lining up on the right side, and he's loving, lining up on the left side. He's an equal opportunity abuser. So you better have a plan for the guy I call the Condor. Like, nobody plays the game like that in this whole league. Yeah, well, maybe moving the pocket away from Max Crosby might help too. But I, you're preaching to the choir when it comes to running the football being the best medicine they can have for a rookie quarterback. My question to you is, you know, there's some, you know, people are trying to decide whether or not Tyson Bajan has the arm strength to, you know, complete all the passes and and, and all the obviously through the the interception to lose the game. You know, he was kind of thrown off his spot. That's part of it. But do you think he has enough arm strength to complete all the passes and make all the the throws that he needs to make as a quarterback? No, I don't. I mean, I think he's serviceable. I think he can be a backup. I think he can win a game for you. I think he can do a lot of those things that you want from your number two or number three. But there is a different level of arm talent you need to defeat the, the best defenses in this league. And there's – six or eight defenses in this league that challenge you, challenge the receivers, what Cleveland just did to San Francisco. Like, you need elite arm talent to win some of these games and win some of these to, you know, put the ball where it's got to be put. Never mind the, the, the weather conditions that are all going to start to change here real soon. Um, no, I think it's, I think it's, uh, it's going to be an issue if he's in there for a long time. So how much, you know, just bouncing off of that, how much that he throws, gets the ball out of his hands quickly, throws with the anticipation, kind of helps, you know, offset that maybe he doesn't have the zip of the best quarterbacks in yeah, the league? Yeah, no, look, there, there, there's, there's a certain way that he has to play to be successful. And what you're describing is, it's just that, like, get the ball out quick, see it quick. You know, the feet got to be set. And that's where... You know, when these guys, you know, whether it's Garden Minshew or Chad Pennington or Jim McMahon, like, you know, these guys get late in the progression and they're under pressure and they're throwing off balance and, you know, the ball isn't getting to where it has to get to in a hurry. It's just, you know, it's they're, they're not gifted like that. There's things that they can do within a certain context that they can be successful. But in this league with freak athletes chasing you and throwing off balance and different platforms and stuff, there's a reason why Mahomes is is up here and Joe Burrow is here. And, and you know, there's not enough. Heck, when this was a 12-team league, we didn't have enough great quarterbacks. You know, we don't have enough great ones right now. We're going to have everything. The arm strength, the elusiveness, the, the mind, the whole thing. And so I'm not here to criticize Tyson. It's, it's an unbelievable story. Free agent kid, lead, you know, maybe leads the Bears to a, a victory. The, the, the Raiders got a two-game win streak. They think they're going to beat them. 
I mean, if I was the defender, if I was Max Crosby or Divine Diablo or, you know, Marcus Epps, I was I would think to myself, there's no way I'm going to Chicago and losing to Tyson Badgett. I ain't doing it. It's not putting that on my resume. That's how defensive players think. Like, we're not losing to this kid. So, you know, Tyson's got a chance. Like, the Raiders think they can get over 500 this week. It'd be great to destroy what might be just a myth. The the uh, entire chat right now is is saying that I'm throwing up in my mouth because I'm I'm a Bajan guy here, Baldy, and you, and you just okay. ruined my dream. <laughs> no, no, no. But, like, I, I look, I'm a fan of the kid, too. Like, we all want that story. You know, it's Rudy in some ways. You know, we all want that story to happen. So I, I got no I'm, – I'm rooting for the kid, too. I'm also yelling at their screen going, protect the damn kid. Like, yeah. get him out of harm's way. Like, come on. Like, I, That's why I looked up, like, who we played last year on October 15th, Millersville College. Like, come on. He was at Miller's – playing Millersville for a homecoming last year. Like, <laughs> come on. Give the kid a chance. I've never heard of that school. Millersville? Uh, see, how, did, how, did, how did that turn out? How did Bajan do it again? Millersville like, College, five dude. Three. Like, he – he was all world, like he was, you know, he was Playboy All American. Now, Bali, last thing I have for you, it, 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 this is more of a big picture question. I, I realize the Bears have a ton of needs, but if there's one thing, like one one position that you could fix that would make like the biggest difference for them, what would it be? Well, the best teams in this league right now are putting almost all the resources into their defensive line. You look at Cleveland, Miles Garrett. You look at San Francisco. You look at Philadelphia. They're paying and drafting defense. You look at what the Jets just did to the Eagles. Like, they've just drafted defensive ends in the first round, back-to-back years, in addition to Quinn and Williams with the third pick in the draft. I want a bona fide stud defensive lineman. I don't care if it's a defensive tackle, if Aaron's Donald, if it's a defensive end. Like, I need an elite dog up front. That's where I would go. So Jalen Carter, got it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, pretty much. Uh, all right, Paul, here's, here's my last one for you. Let's just say that the Bears, regardless of Bajan, are sitting there like, okay, Justin is, because we've been having this conversation. <laughs> we've but, asked Baldy this question three weeks in a no, row this, now. It's not the same. No, it's a different question. I'm just, I'm saying the, the Bears, are, I don't think this is going to happen in any way, shape, or form, but I just want to get your opinion. If the Bears were to trade Justin Fields right now, before the deadline at the end of the month, what do you think he's worth? Well, I don't think you're getting a first-round pick for him right now in the middle of the season. I don't know who would trade for him. And I'm not denigrating Justin. I'm just saying you're going to have to pay him you know, second contract money, okay, and give up assets to get a guy who's gotten hurt three years in a row, all right, and has yet to put a winning streak together, although it's not all his fault for sure. But I don't know what you would get. I mean, I can't see that hypothetical being done right now. But, I mean, if a team is looking, if they say the Patriots need a quarterback, like I don't know that they would do this. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't do it. But they need a quarterback. So let's just say the Patriots are in play. Like, the Patriots don't want to pay that next salary for a guy that is yet to really prove that he can stay healthy, that he can lead, that he can win games late, all that stuff. Like, they might like the talent and the age and the athletic ability, but I just think there's too many question marks still to say, okay, not only are we going to trade for you, we're going to give you this $100 million contract or $80 million guaranteed or whatever it is these days. Like, I just can't see that being done. So a third rounder. <laughs> Se- really, like second, you know, that's. And even if you give him the third, the, th- the, the, the you know, the compensations, you, you probably could agree on that to some degree, but the contract is going to be prohibitive. Yeah. Because I don't know, like the Giants just gave Daniel Jones 40 million. They, they, they have regrets right now, you know, the way they're playing. So you have to, like, if you're going to give that second contract to any player, you have to know. You have to know that this guy is the guy. And there's no way you could say that about Justin Fields right now. I like Justin, but I I, I don't know that I would pony up second contract money um, to say, because you're not going to rent him. Nobody's going to get him for a rental. You want to get him for a long term. The Bears got that decision to make. And that's why I said, look, I know Caleb didn't play well last week and lost, but, you know, I mean, let's just say Caleb is the next great one. I don't know. But if he is. Like, it's a financial decision for a team 
at the top of the draft. Do you want to pay a second contract to a guy that might have a promise in the future that we've worked at developing, or do we want to just start square one, plug this kid and play him like let's hope that he's Brock Purdy or whatever, and we can build around him? It's just a just a sound business decision right now. Okay. Baldy, we gotta we gotta run. We appreciate your time though. Sure. And uh um great stuff as always. We'll talk to you ne- next week. Talk to you next week, guys. You got it, man. Thanks, Baldy. Right, there he is, Brian Baldinger, uh, with some excellent insight as always. Uh and, and I have to ask you this very important question, guys. Are you in the market for a new vehicle? You know I am. I know you are and you still are. Well kicking the can down the road on that one. But well, if no, I wasn't you're doing going that to, wrong. Yeah, because I, you should be taking advantage of the great news we have for you because Ray Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Fox Lake, they've joined the CHGO team. Carm, you know this. Get your get your butt up to Fox Lake. Go see Ray. He'll take care of you. Uh, you'll always be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest inventories and find unforgettable savings at Ray's CDJR. And right now during Ram Power Days at Ray's CDJR, only in Fox Lake, you'll be able to secure... 0% financing or 17% off new Ram models. Could you just picture Mark Carmen driving a Ram down Lakeshore Drive on a beautiful uh, Wednesday morning? Uh, I can't. Uh, that's not all. Now through October 31st. That ASMR there? <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Is that yeah. sexual? It's sexual. Can you Can we not derail not during another the read? <laughs> you started it. He did that. He did uh. that. <laughs> Go ahead, Adam. Now through October 31st, explore their newly renovated showroom and take advantage of limited time seven-year anniversary savings. If you're in the market for a new vehicle, then you have to check out the team at Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, just like I did, because they are the only team we recommend. Visit them today on Route 12 in Fox Lake. For more information, visit Ray CDJR in Fox Lake or RayCDJR.com today, serving the community since 1963. I would love to ASMR one of Rave's vehicles. That would be amazing. <laughs> Full ASMR back of the back of a ram. Also serving the community since 1963. <laughs> Mark Carmen. Seriously. ASMR ram with the ram ram. I love I love Ray. All right, we're going to Ray's going to be on the show tomorrow by the way. Mark was serving in the military in 1963. That's rude. Uh hey, you see these sweet kicks? You can get yourself a pair just like them by becoming friends with our friends at Soul Savvy. That's right. Soul Savvy has been around since 2018, the year that Greg Braggs almost graduated high school, but <laughs> somehow didn't make it out again. It's a good comeback. Their mission has always been the same. Their mission has always been the same. Get sneakers into the hands of people who love them the most. Soul Savvy is a sneaker community that operates in Canada, the U.S., the U.K. They've got three membership levels, the basic, which is free, the mobile plus, 12 bucks. The premium is $33. Uh, look, the basic version, that's for the casual sneaker buyer. You gain access to one-of-a-kind marketplace. It's built for you, not the resellers. Mobile plus is for the sneaker that is always on the go. Build a rotation of sold-out sneakers right from your phone. And then the premium for a guy like Nicholas Moriano. It's for the sneaker. It's tired of paying resale. Find your grails and grow your collection in the world's biggest paid sneaker community. Sign up for Soul Savvy by visiting soul, S-O-L-E-S-A-V-Y dot com forward slash all city. Soul Savvy dot com forward slash all city. Or by downloading the drops by Soul Savvy app. You can go that way either. Download the drops by Soul Savvy app or soulsavvy.com forward slash all city. You sneakerheads, check it out. You're going to love it. All right. A um, couple things I want to follow up on, and we have a super chat here from the Duke. Uh, 1999, the Duke coming in here on a Wednesday. Coming in hot. So let me get this straight. Cody was tried at center three times over multiple regimes. Each diagnosed him as a guard, not a center, and polls thought he was a viable option to start at center. What the fuck was he thinking? Duke, thanks, Duke. You know what I think Ryan Poles is doing right now with that exact super chat is he's already having that thought. What in the world was I thinking? I th- I honestly think he's looking in the mirror. He's doing that. He's doing that on on the center situation and probably on Chase Claypool too. Draft the center number one overall. Now that super chat would be even, <laughs> that super chat would be even funnier 
if the Duke definitely was George McCaskey, but we, you know, that's, that's, uh, I think we can, again, once again, stop talking about that because it's not real. <laughs> I think he's George McCaskey. I don't, it, all right. a 3% chance. <laughs> um, I have a couple of film notes to get to, and then we want to talk about some of the players that have been disappointing this season because I think, you know, just like Cody Whitehair at center, I think there's a number of things that Ryan Poles thought were going to happen that haven't so far in these first six games. Um, one thing I'm adding to this list, though, I have is because since the, the subject of Tyson Bajan's arm strength came up, the one thing I noticed just watching the film is that, like, his passes just don't quite have the same zip on it. Yep. Like, and I think it's probably, like, you think about, like, uh, spin rotation on, like, a fastball. Like, I don't think the ball, sp- he doesn't have as tight of a spiral. It, that's what it looked like to me. Um, I think he has good enough at arm strength, though, for NFL. Like, if I was, you know, going back and rewriting the, the scouting report on him coming out of, uh, you know, Shepherdsville? Shepherd. No, Shepherd. Shepherd. Millersville. <laughs> Millersville. I, I just got confused with yeah. Millersville. He is swinging in from West Virginia for years at Shepherd. Some said no good. They let the Bajan slip, but not past Paul's fingertips. The odds are you can stop. if you're open, you he stop. will find you. Keep going. Secret Bajan. Right. All right, go ahead. Sorry. We just derailed another social video. Uh, <laughs> no, no, we didn't. We're right there. Keep going. <laughs> Start over. <laughs> Regardless, I think Tyson Bajan has NFL arm strength. I don't think it's as good as Justin Fields. I think it's fine. What matters more to me is touch and accuracy. And there was one play where I think he made the wrong decision. It was fourth and three. I don't know why he was throwing that harder pass towards the sideline. To Tyler Scott. But that's actually a good pass. It was a sick pass. Like, it was actually, it was accurate. It was the wrong decision. It wasn't where that ball should have gone on fourth down. But it was on his hands, uh, and it was a good pass. So, I, I, I'm i not concerned about the arm strength. It's We've seen quarterback after quarterback. To me, it's more important. He has plenty... His arm strength is plenty good enough if he can throw with accuracy, if he can get rid of the ball faster. Um, so I'm intrigued to watch him play. Well, when like when Baldy was talking about, and this is something me and Mark have gone back and forth about, he gets the ball quick, he throws with anticipation. But if he has to go through progressions and try to read the field and find the windows, that's where that lack of zip, like Adam's talking about, that's where safeties and corners are going to jump him because they're going to jump those routes. If he can't – throwing with anticipation means you're throwing it into the window before the window's there. But if he's trying to force it into something, if he doesn't have enough arm strength, it's going to get him in trouble at times. All right, can I freak out on the show right now? Am yes, I freak, freak out. Let me, let That's me, what we well, want. Okay. That's what we encourage All right. it. All right. We have no idea – he has not played. He's been out there for five seconds. Can we let the dude play a game to see what he's going to do in those scenarios? Yeah, I agree. We cannot, there, you cannot extrapolate from one preseason game and from a quarter and a half on Sunday what he's going to do when, how much his arm strength is. We have to see it in action. Let him play a freaking game, and then we can come out here and either he you know, makes some level of deduction, he's, he, he might be or he might not be. I mean, I, come on. We got to give this guy. Can we? You're the one who cited his preseason stats earlier. I yes, I did as as something that we want to see more of. I but I like you're you're making some proclamations. Why did you yell at Baldy? Because he's scared. Because he's Brian (laughs) Baldinger, and I show respect to my football gurus. That's not you're easier. You're I'm not. I didn't yell at Baldy. I did push back. Why did you yell at Baldy? All right. Regardless. (laughs) I agree, though. I mean, he has an opportunity. We, we to, haven't seen it. We don't know. Let him. Let's let's see what happens. I'm I'm freaking getting the jersey. That's it. I'm I am buying the jersey. I'm wearing it to the tailgate. I'm getting a. I'm I'm getting the jersey. I don't believe you. Okay, friend of the dude who can get me the jersey on Facebook. He was friend me back. All right. Uh, a couple other <sighs> notes I have. Uh, one of the I think the. The uh, the biggest news we're talking about, not the biggest news that came out this morning from Flus that we're not talking about, is that Roshan Johnson is still in the concussion protocol. 
That sucks. And here's why that sucks. Deontay Foreman cannot block. Stop asking him to block. Can't do it. Won't do it. Bad idea. I think that that was a huge problem in this game against the Vikings. And it's just, and Darrington Evans is too small. He actually did it. He was. I think he tried harder. Um, but it's not good. Roshan Johnson's their best blocking running back. They need him back. That's not good. Are you saying playing Curry? Uh, play somebody who could block. Well, that's your option. Yeah, that's probably. I yeah, I don't know. But then you that takes away from the running game. So then, do you need maybe two backs back there more? I mean, you got to do something. Uh, but it's well. It, let's let's talk about this part of the the Roshan Johnson thing. Let me just get through these notes. Oh, okay. well, what do you want to say about Roshan? Well, the, he, <laughs> it's a, this is a long, this is a long lasting concussion. And when he first got hurt, they didn't get him off the field right away. Yeah, that's fair. Well. And, they, and they've and they've done that a bunch of times this year. And in that, in addition to everything else that's going wrong with the coaching staff, that's a that's a pretty bit damn bad one. Keep yeah. going. Well, and yeah, and, and if it doesn't sound good for this week too, so that, that's a fair point to bring up. Um, all right. The other one I wanted to bring up. Shout out to uh, J T O'Sullivan, the QB school, because he was the one that spotted this. I did not notice it when in my first watch back through the tape, but the play that I was actually annoyed with. I felt like more than anybody on Sunday was the one where Justin Fields tucked the ball and ran for two yards instead of just throwing it away. And he took a hit going out of bounds. It's just like, protect yourself. Stop doing that. Two yards. Also, Daniel Hunter's really fast. Mm -hmm. He just ran him down. That was really impressive. Um, Where I'm going with this, though, if you look at the sideline, I think this has been going around on Twitter a little bit, too. If you look at the sideline on that play, there's one assistant coach. I can't even really. Uh, the video is like just not clear enough for me to figure out who it is. And then there's Lucas Patrick who comes running down the sideline from like 15 yards away to help get his quarterback up. And standing right there doing nothing is Matt Eberflus. Just looking over, like looking straight down at his quarterback who's at his feet. And JT O'Sullivan lost his mind watching this. Like, how are you an NFL head coach not helping up your quarterback? That's a little. I don't. I mean, I I've, I got to see the actual clip to. I don't remember this. Well, so. then be quiet. Not like uh, that was sent to us this morning and said, "Hey, watch this." Let's see here. Oh, oh here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. What happens? This is uh, this is the loaf. Here. I I I. You don't have to. You don't have to. Do eight thirty one. 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 How many? How many big bold letters too? How many clips were put in Slack this morning? How many did I retweet? How many did I comment on? I missed one. It's, it's all right. I one hundred percent. I'm wrong. I I I, I loaf. You're telling me that we're blaming the head coach though for not picking up the player? He's literally right at the bottom of his feet. Like, he's underneath. Like, Iberflus is standing over him. Maybe Matt Iberflus has a bad back. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it's just... <laughs> okay, so it's not great. <laughs> the it's, anger right now. It's not great <laughs> optics. Have you, ever, do, have you ever picked up a player? Every single time one of our players gets hit towards our sideline, I am there picking him up. When I'm the one standing there. I'm not right. saying I'm standing there every time. Every opportunity I've had, I help a player up. Yes. I don't care if it's the quarterback. I don't care if it's the long snapper. I don't care whoever it is. If he's wearing a caramel jersey hit towards our sideline, me and everyone else standing there is helping the kid up. Okay. We'll even help the opponents up okay. sometimes. I mean, right. and it comes right. full circle because remember the, when Justin Fields rookie year, he gets laid out against the Browns in the preseason and no one helped yeah. get him up. Well, and shout out to Lucas Patrick, man. Right. The guy comes flying down the sideline. Right. Because it, it wasn't just Eberflus. Yeah. Whoever's standing around there, nobody is reacting fast enough as as a good teammate. Except uh, for Lucas Patrick. My head is just a little bit spinning that we're at the point with Matt Eberflus that we've already gotten all the way to. He doesn't even pick players up off the ground. But maybe I need to just embrace the fact that he yeah. needs to do yeah. that too. Along yeah. With everything else he's yeah. doing. I was just bringing up what someone else Pointed out. Pointed out. I thought it was a fair thing to point out. I'm not sitting here ranting and raving about it. I didn't like it. When I saw JT point this out, I was like, I don't like that. But maybe that's me just being weird football guy. Why do we it, it, speculate out, Hogue? Why do you think he didn't pick him up? Is that he's just clueless to the fact that he's 
that he's even there? Or what, what, do, what, do, you, what do you think was going on with the Flues? Best guess. He's probably thinking, why did you run with the ball there? <laughs> so you think he was mad at him. <laughs> he's not, and I'm not picking you up because Why didn't you throw that away? Okay. Okay. Maybe that's it. That's as good of a response as... as, as I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't know, but I don't like it. It was angry. Pick up your players. Angry, right. passive, aggressive, flus. I ain't picking you up. You, <laughs> you're ruining my life. I'm gonna get fired because of you. So when, so when, so when Patrick Finley lays me out on the sidelines, you guys got to pick me up. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> I got you, Brax. If Pat Finley lays you out anytime, <laughs> he's ever, a big dude. <laughs> he's tall. He's a. No, he's 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 tall, and he's got some ability to. Do things, but if you get laid out, man, I promise you, no one on this show is picking you up. <laughs> Nicholas Moriano, a single person. Who you got between uh, Braggs and Finley? This is too funny because I actually, Patrick Finley and I talked two days ago because, you know, I, everything that happened on Twitter is like, we're good. I just want to make sure we're good. So hopefully nobody's laying anybody out and then we have to you figure out Pat, who's picking who up. Good. Yeah. You tell Pat we're not good. And then I'm going to lay him out tomorrow on Hallis Hall. <laughs> Pat's the only guy that shows up at Hallis, by the way, with, like, workout clothes on, ready to, ready to cover the well, Bears and lay people out. Other than Nick, Pat's probably the second best-dressed person in that room. He is. He's, he's wearing, wearing, like, mesh shorts. No, he's dapper. He's dapper. Mesh shorts. I, I swear to God, I've seen Pat Finley is? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. We've had no, lunch with Nick, him. Nick, help me out here. You have, um, am I am I not right that he wore, he literally wears like basketball shorts out there, and and like a weird hat and and it's just <laughs> he has a lot of hats. Usually has some good. Sh- I don't. He wears he wore shorts all the way. Well, to that's like, why I wore a suit. Ago. That's why I wore a suit. The, the 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 nice stuff to the combine because I had to live up to you know the standard. You did look good, Nick. Yeah. Help us out here. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, look, everyone comes uh, in second place to me, but I, I give Patrick Finley oh. his uh, his praise there. Uh, but, you know, hey, we're also leaving out, like, you know, Herb, Sharky Herb and, and Cassie. Yeah, and Herb. Yeah, so we're, we're missing some other people that know how to how to dress to impress there at the, the Bears staff here. Herb or Bears, uh, right me. out of bed and comes to practice. He doesn't dress. Whoa. Herb, Herb's got Herb, hey, swag. Hey, Herb on game wearing, day. He was wearing a CHGO uh, hoodie, so it obviously looked good, and he was rocking the, you know, the camel hoodie. On some game there, days, so. on some game days, Herb Howard looks like he's like going up to the Kentucky Derby. Like he's got like the oh yeah yeah pink suit yeah the pink yeah, yeah. suit mm-hmm. yeah yeah. I mean Herb's got all sorts of swag, but I don't think he dresses for practice. I think he literally rolls out of bed and comes to practice. But we can confirm that he thinks about the things he's wearing to practice. All right, can we? Anyone else you want to? Anyone else in that media room you want to torch right now? <laughs> I got more options. I get, no, I love it. I love everybody out there, Nick, including Chris Emma, my guy. What were your take <laughs> takeaways from uh, from this press conference this morning with Matt Eberflus? Well, okay, I'll start with like the actual legitimate update with with Justin Fields, right, and that right dislocated thumb. Right now, the swelling is going down, so I guess that that was like the legitimate update. But we're still it's going to come down to grip strength, you guys, and whether or not Fields will be able to go. He's at the time we were speaking to Iberflus, he was working with trainers. Iberflus said he was progressing well, but I think it, what he kind of left us with is that we'll see where it is and that he's still doubtful for this week. And if that becomes, you know, what ends up happening, Tyson Bajan will be starting you guys against the Raiders on, on Sunday. So what did you make of Iberflus saying that the guys are confident in him, Tyson Bajan is confident, I'm interested to see him. The offense is going to look different because it's a different quarterback and we're going to coach up the offense to the player. Flu seems pretty damn optimistic about this, dude, if we're reading between the Bajan lines here from what I can tell, Nick. Yeah, and I know a lot of Bears fans had um, they had their issues with that. Like, oh, so now you're going to cater your offense to your quarterback. So has that been the case for what you were doing offensively for Justin Fields, but it makes sense, right? You want to cater to your quarterback strengths, and we know that Tyson Bajan likes to get the ball out quick. And he's still a guy with a lot of inexperience, right? And if he does make his first career NFL start on Sunday, you want to put him in the best position possible to be comfortable. So I guess it's it's you want to hear those things, especially if it is going to be Tyson Bajan on Sunday, but – I know some Bears fans had some trouble with that as well. It's like, well, were you doing the same exact thing for Justin Fields throughout these weeks? And 
you know, some game plans, it looks like that. And obviously others, if you look at the Minnesota Vikings game on fields and also the coaching staff for not maybe putting that offense in the best position to succeed. I mean, the thing that stood out to me that I just found interesting and maybe it, it's not, but when Dan Weeder asked him, is it still on the table that Justin Fields is going to need surgery? This is kind of what I'm bracing for is that we're going to hear that he's out for a year. Matt Eberflus didn't really deny surgery is still a possibility. He said everything's still on the table. Am I reading too much into this? Yeah, he said that, you know, nothing's off the table. Nothing's on the table right now. So, again, take take that with what you will. But, there is no yeah, he didn't – yeah, there is no table. There is no table going on right now. But again, he said that later in the week they'll just have more clarity on, you know, the the um, the thumb and how it's doing. But like I said, that's the swelling's going down. But I don't know. It feels like they're delaying the inevitable. And however long Fields is out, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But does that give? Again, we know Matt Eberflus is big into his competitive advantage, right? So are the Raiders even considering that they're going to be playing Fields on Sunday? I don't think. I don't think that's the case. I think they're fully prepared for see what Tyson Bader can do. Nick, what uh, I know Cody Whitehair came up in discussion today. What was that uh, question answer interaction like uh, with the Bears center who's been struggling? Yeah, so I mean, I asked Matt Eberflus like with the snap, and we all saw it on Sunday against the Vikings. Like, has that been an issue in practice? And you know, it was interesting that Eberflus basically said it's been a little bit during practice, and he kind of. You know, he said that was because, you know, there's a, a position change, but Cody's been playing center, you guys. It's not like this is his first time doing it, but, you know, mixing positions. But he didn't have to answer it the way he did. He could have easily, you know, deflected the question and not even, you know, kind of relayed what's been going on in practice. But he did say that some of the snapping issues were in practice, and Iberflus made it really apparent right in his opening statement that he wasn't going to talk about offensive line combinations. And he, he made that straightforward right in the beginning of his uh, – you know, it's opening remarks, but I'll just say I would expect some uh, some changes along the offensive line. Who's playing center, Nick? If I had to guess, it's def- it, I would put, like, Lucas Patrick as, as the guy that would – I mean, he ended the game there. If he's more comfortable, Iberflu said, like, he wanted to calm down Tyson Bajan. Lucas Patrick was the guy that was ending the game there. and I think it was the – it was close to the end of the third quarter where they made that offic- that switch official – and even, guys, Lucas Patrick on the interception that Tyson Bajan threw, that snap wasn't good at all. It was slow and high, and Tyson oh, Bajan had to wait for that and throw the ball. So there's been snapping issues regardless of who's a center right now. That's where it's like, why not, why not give Feeney a shot, right? I mean, they brought him in. Both these guys have taken turns. He's busy. Not being good enough at guard or center, honestly. You know, let's, let's, give, let's give the mullet man a shot. Uh, breaking news, by the way, I'm, I, I'm just searching Bajent jerseys right now. The blue Bears jersey is sold out in medium, large, and extra large. The white Bears jersey of Bajent, the white 17, is sold out in medium and large. So there is a run on Bajent jerseys going on right now. That's or, because they had like 10 on stock. Yeah, they had 10 on stock. <laughs> Well, that's fine. There were 10 jerseys, and they have bought them all up. There was at least 10 people His out there. His family bought them. Correct. You know, Speaking of 10, you, you mentioned number 10, Mark. There's a new number 10 in Chicago, and we got the roster sheet today. Trace McSorley is going to be the new number 10 in Chicago. You had Chase Claypool before that, so wonder who uh, lives up to have a better, uh, better represent the number 10 in Chicago right now. I don't like it. it- <laughs> It, the only thing worse would be if Kirk Cousins was playing for the Bears. Did they? Did, hold on a second. Did they say to McSorley, "You're wearing ten, so we can forget about Claypool," or did he come in here and ask for ten? He probably asked for ten. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Will you find that out, Nick? Go up to McSorley today and ask him. Did he ask for ten? Otherwise, the Bears are trying to like move on from Claypool. Will you ask Nick to do things that actually matter. That matters. <laughs> He wore number think, nine at, at Penn think, State. You so don't think you don't think that Nicholas that Albrecht wants to know that, and Michael H. and Doug Van Dorn and Nathaniel B. If, if come on, you, you, that's how sweet does that jersey look? Come on, hard hitting journalism right there, you guys. Can you I, get a Trace I, I McSorley sure jersey? Ask question. Let me, let me see if I can get a McSorley. Nick, anything else for these press conferences? 
Uh, just real quick for the other injuries, you still have Roshan Johnson dealing. He's in still concussion, still dealing with that. And then Nate Davis with that high ankle sprain. He's going to be doubtful uh, for this game on, on Sunday against the Raiders. And it's more like week to week with him. So, again, just more more things to consider and think about with this Bears offensive line, how it could be changing for the Sunday matchup with the Raiders. Nick, any word on when Phil Snow is going to talk? I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I, I got no update for you there, Mark. Sorry. I'll, I'll ask around, though. You better run. I almost brought that up myself a second ago because I was like, the only thing this guy cares about is Trace McSorley's jersey and Phil Snow. <laughs> I need, you got to find Snow. Find Snow and find out what he's going to do. Get on the case. Snow's leading us to the promised land. Where the hell is Snow? Well, he's and talk to Big Sorley because he's not going to be in game days. So he won't be at Soldier Field. So this is if we're going to find snow, it's somewhere in this building. So I'll go on a on a little, uh, I guess, hunt here and find find me some snow. Uh, Pat Finley's probably with snow right now, getting the scoop. Unlike Bragg. So. <laughs> Nick, I'm so jealous that you're there and I'm here. <laughs> You'll be I'll there see tomorrow, you here tomorrow, home. Adam. Hi, <laughs> right, Nick. See you tomorrow. I'm going to hug Nick tomorrow when I see him. Where the hell is Phil Snow, and when is he speaking? I can't wait to live my Thursday. <laughs> Give me Phil Snow. <laughs> I'm going to live my Thursday and not think about Phil Snow a single time. It's going to be great. Can you imagine what Phil Snow is doing right now to his office, just hanging some paintings and settling into Hallis and introducing himself to Virginia? You think Phil got a, an office? Okay, fine. Above his desk in his corner, he's putting up the, the family photos are I think going up. he's in up. the corner of Fluce's office. Which, yeah. Dave Wanstead nailed it, by the way. I, uh, I feel like Chris Pagaro who sent us this 499 Super Chat. We could, we could just change the name here, but anything would work. He says, anybody else want Carm to shut up about Tyson Bajant? Kind of annoying. Oh, We could Pagaro. change that to Phil Snow, Trace McSorley, any other idiot he's brought up in the last 10 See, minutes. See, here's the thing, though. I, I, I can defend him on the Bajant stuff because Bajant is the starting quarterback of the Chicago Bears this week. This is the time to talk about Bajant. It is not the time to talk about Trace McSorley or Phil Snow. It'll never be time to talk about Phil Snow. Just for, for for the record, I didn't bring up McSorley. Nick did, and you know Snow was two percent of the show. He was worth by two percent. I love Snow. You don't respect Snow, and that's on you. Did you find out if there's any McSorley jerseys available? No, I didn't because I got just derailed by Hogue with his anti-Snow takes. Oh, I, yeah, my fault. I derailed everything. You're right. <laughs> well, maybe that's what Javon Dexter meant last night when he said he's never seen Snow. Maybe he was talking about Phil Snow. Have you ever seen the snow? <laughs> that would have been a good follow-up. You're afraid of the winter, and by the way, <laughs> your new defensive analyst, who you'll n never probably meet, his name is Phil Snow. <laughs> so. CHGO is supported by Goose Island Beer Company, Chicago's beer since... Since? Since? <laughs> 1988, baby. There we go. Oktoberfest is out. The Summer beer hug family's still going strong. Um, fun fact, our monitor that we look into here that you guys can't see is supported by two giant cases of beer hug. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's mm. just a fact. Just to give it a little it's, lift. It's a very versatile beer. But every day, every Monday when Herb Howard comes in here and takes one, it one of these days the monitor is going to fall over. <laughs> Uh, 312 Wheat Ale is also good. Full Pocket Pills, of course. You can grab Ultra Fresh brewery, brewery, uh, brewery exclusive beers at Goose Island's original brew house on Clyburn Avenue in Lincoln Park or from their tap room on Fulton Street in Westtown. Goose Island Beer Company, Chicago's beer. That's right. When you're having that Goose Island, make sure you hop over to Giraffe Kings. Use the code CHGO to sign up. NFL season is going strong. Even if the Bears are not strong. And DraftKings Sportsbook is hooking new customers up with an offer that's even stronger. Bet five bucks on any game this week to score $200 instantly in bonus bets. And DraftKings isn't stopping there. All customers can take advantage of a sweetener offer every game day this October. Get in on the game day greatness. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. 
Now and use the code CHGO. New customers can score $200 instantly in bonus bets when you bet five on the NFL. That's code CHGO only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boo Hill Casino and Resort. Licensee partner, Golden Nugget, Lake Charles, 21 and over. Age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after assurance. See sportsbook.draftkings.com slash Football terms for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. For a translation of what Greg Braggs just said, send me an email at mark.carman at gmail. I, I have to read it. I understand. You made up some words along the way there, but you did a great job. Uh, <laughs> Which word did I make A couple up? of them. Just say. We'll, we'll work on it. We'll look at the tape. Uh, hey, to our friends at FOCO, we love you. Get fitted out in the best sports gear around. Hoodies, shoes, signs, bobbleheads, everything in between. The Aloha shirts, the straw hats, polos, bags, everything you need for a football game, including, by the way, come out to our tailgate on Sunday, hang out, and then go see the Bears and the Raiders and Bajant and Snow and everybody. Set decorations that FOCO has donated, they're awesome too. Look at our sweet little Walter Payton extravaganza going on right there. That looks good. Check out foco.com or click the link in the description below for all non-presale items. Use the promo code CHGO for 10% off. Uh, our guy, the Duke's having a, a, a little bit of a breakdown and some issues with uh, Ryan Poles today. Uh, 1999 Super Chat here. So much confidence in his coaches, but not enough to draft the Elite 3 technique who fell to you on draft night. If Wright ends up being a Hall of Fame tackle, he will still never affect the game as much as Jalen Carter already has. WTF again. Duke... Uh, were you right. in that position? Specific- we it got continues. three in a row here, buddy. Okay. 1999, then you pass <laughs> up on the top center prospect, John Michael Schmitz, leaving interior pressure, which is what makes JF1 look like an Oompa Loompa out there, unaddressed. Oompa Loompa. Are we sure Poles isn't intentionally harming the Bears <laughs> for cutting him? Ha. Uh, 1999, again, the Duke, oh, and he used a third-round pick on a gadget return guy in a league that's been actively trying to discourage kick returns. Kevin Warren cannot let Poles draft again. He needs to be done. Okay. You didn't say the last part. That's fine. That's not needed. (laughs) Hogue, do you think there's any way that Kevin Warren makes a move with his general manager if things continue to go awry? I don't know. But the one thing I do know about Kevin Warren is Kevin Warren not only said from day one that he's a, you know, why why not guy? Like, why can't this be done? He's always thinking big, right? He is responsible for the giant TV deal, the Big Ten, mm-hmm. which is annoying when you got to figure out how to watch Peacock. You figure that out yet, Braggs, for uh, the Purdue basketball schedule? No, it pisses me off. Yeah. So, well, call Kevin Warren. Um, but regardless, like, I am in no way reporting at all that this would ever be a possibility. But I'm just giving you an example of some of the things I would th- When I think of big ideas that could ever be in Kevin Warren's brain, I think of like, hmm, you think Peyton Manning would ever want to run a team? Like, that's the type of stuff I feel like goes through Kevin Warren's brain when he's like, how do I truly fix the Bears? He cannot be looking at this. uh, What are we, even eight months onto the job? It's really only six since he officially started, six and a half. Uh, And thinking that this is acceptable. I just don't think that's who Kevin Warren is. So I don't know if he's willing to make a move. On the GM, I would tend to believe that, like right now, that would surprise me. But going down this recycling, like every three years, whoop, let's start over thing, I just, and again, if you're going to 
go into another situation where you're drafting a new quarterback, shouldn't you have a new coaching staff? And then you can even make the argument that, okay, let's just reset this whole thing. You could make that argument. You could. So what's the greatest thing that the Kansas City Chiefs as an, as an organization has ever done? Draft, Draft Patrick, Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. Right. Traded up to do it. Drafted Patrick Mahomes. Ahead of Deshaun Watson, the whole thing, right? Well, who was a part of that organization at that time? Um, Ryan Poles. I know, I was trying to think of a snarky response that wasn't Ryan Poles. I'm just saying, the no, look, you could make the argument like that, that Kevin Warren could play this out, and if the Bears get in a position where they have the number one and the number two overall pick, let's just say that that dream happens. Am I going to allow Ryan Poles to do this? And if he decides that he doesn't, then... Damn then, it, Matt Nagy was the answer. Yeah, there it is. Why didn't I say that? There you go. My point is that you could, if he wants to be all bold, and Peyton Manning's a super interesting name that you just threw out, he could say, let's reset the whole thing and give him the first the one and two, and, and let's, let's roll from there. However, you would be looking for somebody who would make the right quarterback choice. And Ryan Poles was a part of an organization that did that. Now, granted, there's a lot of other things that he's done wrong, but I... I just have a hard time. Here's that. another one. Bill Belichick, you might get fired by Robert Kraft. Do you have any interest in running a team? I'm just, I'm throwing out total hypotheticals here that I just, I think yeah. that's how Kevin Warren's brain is wired. If I'm going to fix this, how can I do it in the biggest and boldest way? Bill Belichick's made some I really weird trips. Like, I do think it makes most sense in theory, to just get rid of all three. I've said that for a decade now, all the way back to when they got rid of Phil Emery and Mark Tressman and didn't get rid of Jay Cutler. It was stupid. But in reality, I do not think that Kevin Warren is going to fire Ryan Poles. He's going to make it through this. He's going to give Ryan Poles an opportunity to draft his first quarterback and have another shot at the head coach. A lot of people try to you know, excuse him for the first coaching hire because, you know, it was quote unquote, you know, thrusted onto him, you know, Matt Eberflus because of how quick the turnaround of the hire was. I don't. That's on Poles' resume. But at the end of the day, I think he's going to get another shot at a head coach and a shot to draft his quarterback. <clears throat> and I, I, I'm just going to continue to dream that Jim Harbaugh is the head coach and Greg Roman is the OC. And maybe Kevin Warren's relationship with the Big Ten and Jim Harbaugh maybe will help get George McCaskey to see the light on that proposition. Dream a little dream with Greg. It's been a journey today. We're all singing now? This is ridiculous. So. It's rubbing off on me, but at least I'm better than he is. No, you're not. That's, that's, just, not true. that's just an insane You just tried comment. to like slide that in there. No. I mean, Carm's definitely the better singer. Oh, goodness. I mean, and that's solely because you're terrible at singing, Hogue. Wow. Not oh, because his wow. arm was so good. Wow. I'm not saying he's good. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying it's just you're that bad at singing. You know, if you'd go all the way back to when I was nine years old and people were just complimenting my singing voice in the way that forty two. That's right. And when I stepped up in choir <laughs> at, at, at Edgewood Junior High School and was a, a massive player in the second row. When he was at the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. And when I was at the <laughs> That's Jimmy right. Tony, two dollars. <laughs> Don't kid yourself. Floose will be back. Jimmy Tony, I, I'm not ruling it out. I'm not ruling anything out. If they let these guys draft a quarterback with the same coaching staff, then I will be disappointed in Kevin Warren because that's just doing what they've done here for years. I think they will. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, think, I, think they will. <laughs> I think they'll get rid of everybody. I mean, he got rid of Claypool like he did. You know, he could have let that. You're drag. saying polls will get rid of the coaching staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Uh, any other Super Chats? Nope. We good? Hey, hit that subscribe button. We appreciate it. We did reach 40,000 YouTube subscribers. We're really happy about it, but we want to get to 50. So. 50. 50. Um, we need 50. you. Our loyal CHGO viewers, some of you diehards, hopefully most of you diehards, uh, die to help hard. us out. Send the link, show, spread the word, send it to a Bears fan you know. 
Uh, we appreciate you doing that. Tell them to hit the subscribe button. If you are not subscribed and you're watching right now, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that like button as well. Um, we are back tomorrow. Watch the Javon Dexter interview too. Yeah, yeah. That's from last night. It's different times. So you might not have seen it because you're used to watching here. Uh, but the Javon Dexter episode from last night is right here on the YouTube channel as well. Go ahead and find it. Very, very bizarre moment with Braggs and I eating chicken wings. Yeah, we'd skip over that part. I, uh, I don't know why I was sitting in Greg Braggs' lap by the end of the show last night, but apparently I was. That was what, the weirdest part. Like, it was one thing that you guys were eating chicken together and like talking about it in a very weird way. We love chicken. But you, there's this giant table, and you <laughs> or guys are like basically in each other's laps. I, I don't understand that. Apparently, I want to be close to Greg. Well, you can do that offset because we got. Bye. We all silly like the mayor.